Good afternoon, Victory Station Ministries. Oh, I know y'all can do better than that. Good afternoon. God has been too good for us not to say praise the Lord. Amen. He didn't have to wake us up this morning. We didn't have to get out of bed this morning, but we are here. So we need to lift up our voices and say, thank you, Jesus. Welcome to Victory Station Ministries. Um, thank you guys so much for being here. It is Father's Day. Happy Father's Day, dads. For those who are online, thank you for watching. Happy Father's Day to you. God bless you. Jesus is so good. I want to open up with prayer, and then I will turn it over to our praise and worship leader, Mr. Bobby Racy. So everyone bow your heads, please. Lord, I just want to say thank you. You have been so good to us. From the day we were born to this moment right now, you knew our comings and our goings, Lord. I know you are covering us as we stand here today. I know there's a purpose for each one of us in this room, Lord. Help us see what that purpose is, Father. I cannot thank you enough for being exactly who you are, yes. what you are, yes. and why you are here to save us from ourselves, Jesus. Just thank you, God, for everything that you have done everything that you are currently doing and everything that you are going to do for us. I know our days may not always be easy, Father, but we trust you. We thank you because what we're going through right now is not the end all be all, Lord. We're going to learn from what we're doing and move in the direction that you have us to go. Lord, I just thank you in Jesus' name. You are so good. And you are worthy to be praised. We must lift up our voices every chance we get to give you the praise and the glory that you deserve. We love you, Father. We thank you, Father. In all these things we say, amen. yourself, God. God, you're able, God. You're able to do exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ever ask or think. So right where you are, people of God, I invite you to lift your hands and lift your voices in this place as we declare this right here. God is able to do just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able, yeah, yeah, I know he is, he's able, yeah, yeah, God is able to do. Just what he said he would do. He's gonna fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God, cause he won't give up on you. He's able.
of the Lord. How many of you are happy to be at the house of God on today? Hallelujah. We're so grateful to see all of your beautiful faces. Thank you so much, Brother Racy. Hallelujah. I know you have another service you have to bounce off to, and we're so grateful for these men and women of God. Would you give the Lord a hand praise for the praise team, the musicians? Hallelujah. These men of God and women of God that labor before the Lord. Hallelujah. So good to be here. God bless you, man. And you be careful. You, I know you have to you have to move. But Lord, are y'all so happy to see each one of you? For those of you that may be new to Victory Station Ministries, and this may be your first time, I want to tell you that we're so my wife and I, you saw her, she opened up the service, Lady Tony. We're so happy. Yes, we give the Lord a hand praise for this incredible woman of God. We're so happy to see all of you. If you don't know someone here, would you just please greet them in the name of Jesus? I know that, Sister Virginia, I know that some of our folks are, are still strolling in and folks from the gay church are here. It's so good to see you. Would you just greet someone that you don't know in Jesus' name? Hallelujah. Just make yourselves known and, and friendly. Hallelujah. For those of you that are watching, around the nation. We were um, in Kansas City earlier this week for a, um, a memorial service, helping to celebrate a life and, and to minister to a, a dear friend of ours who uh, they, they lost their son. And, but one of the things in, in, in the midst of that, number one, we're still sending prayers, we're still sending the word of the Lord to you because I, I you need to understand the Lord said he would never leave you nor forsake you. And we're sending that word to our dear sister and our friends in Kansas City who buried their son this week. My wife and I were there. But one of the things that happened was some of the saints came up to us, Dr. Tish, and they said to us, "We fought. they say they leave their service and then they rush home with their food or whatever the case. And they pull up their laptops and they stream our service from Kansas City and and." Just a number of folks, and we hear that from Indianapolis. We know folks are probably watching from Las Vegas today, and folks are watching from all over the nation. But we greet you in the name of Jesus. And for those of you who are here that are here, it's so good to see y'all. I'm so excited about this awesome man of God that's going to come in a few moments. But you may be seated in the name of Jesus. Thank you so much. Um, I'm so grateful to see um, Officer Ellington in the corner. Happy Father's Day to him and to all the, the men of God, all, all the fathers in the place. Can you give the Lord a hand praise for Father's Day? Yeah. Hallelujah. I know that's a 
very unappreciated or underappreciated role uh, the importance of fathers and um, but let me tell you I'm so grateful my father is my earthly father is in heaven I lost him a few years ago but his le legacy lives on in me and in my siblings and I wanted to before we jump into the word of God I'm so excited about the word of God that's going to come forth in this anointed man of God that I love dearly but I want to I've, I've been sharing with our congregation the worship of giving we do praise and worship physically with our bodies and with our voices but there's a scripture that says that where your treasure is that's where your heart is and worship and giving is one of those things that we do we don't do it begrudgingly the bible says the lord loves the cheerful or the gregarious the, the the cheerful giver and literally and pastor gerald knows this if you are starting a ministry or you're trying to facilitate a ministry in this day and age you need both a live presence as for the people that are physically here as well as a online presence because there are folks lady sabrina that we've met that have told us and, and, and it's so amazing that have told us they have not stepped foot physically back in a church since 2020. They physically have not stepped foot back in the church. And so what happens is we take the church to them via their cell phones, via their computers, via their iPads. We take the church to them. And so if you will, and, and for those of you that have a heart to give both in mind, those are in person, um, there are three different ways, really there's four, but there's three different ways that we worship the Lord or we use modern technology to do that and that there should be something on the screen brother Donnie but there's three different ways there's the the text to give feature which is 469-414-5001 and I don't see it up there but that's okay no problem and then there's also in your seat you may have these QR codes that um we can just uh that you can scan and then give the feet and worship the Lord via that pathway and I'll make sure you guys have it on the screen but with that being said, thank you all so much for your faithful support of this ministry and what we're trying to do to take the gospel of Jesus Christ all around the world. With that being said, um, I want to, I'm so excited to, <laughs> our technician, our person, she's not here, she's away on, I think she's at a wedding herself, so she normally does our PowerPoints and our overheads and things like that, but I want to welcome if I can, this anointed man and woman of God. I am Pastor Craig, for some of you that have never met me and I haven't had the pri privilege of meeting you personally, but I will tell you that Pastor Gerald and Lady Sabrina are so special to my wife, to me and my wife, because one of the things that happened was is that not only did they were one of the first couples that blessed us, and when God was taking us through a transition, not only in our ministry, but also in our personal lives, this man and woman of God stepped in to say, you know what? We know we've been there. We're going to wrap our arms around you. We're going to love you. We know that God has a calling on your life. And this man and woman of God not only wrapped themselves, their arms around us, but they've been friends. They've been confidants. They've been ones that we can lean on and and bless and the interesting thing about our relationship and i'll tell you about your pastor for those of you that are here from the gate church i served with many men and women of god in terms of launching ministries for years brother james since you've been so good to see you guys but i, I helped launch a number of ministries around the nation and then when god called us to launch our ministry so many of those ministers that I served with went ghost on me when I said God has now called me. And if you end, as they'll testify, it's a very lonely road to walk when you're, when you're serving in ministry. And you need a church people, a group of folks around you to wrap their arms around you. And so many of the men and God, or men and women of God that we sold seed offerings and planted and did all kinds of things are nowhere to be found when we're launching but this man and woman of God that are here said not only are we are you with are we physically with you brother we're spiritually and financially we're with you we're going to support you we're supporting your ministry 
And when the Lord placed on my heart to have this anointed man of God to come and deliver a word for Father's Day, I did not take it lightly. Thank you so much. I did not take it lightly. I felt so blessed to have him say yes. He went and sought the Lord first. And then he came back and said, the Lord has given me clearance to come and share a word of the Lord with you. But I love him because like us, even before us, in 2019, this man and woman of God took a leap of faith to launch the Gate Church of North Dallas. And then not knowing, like the rest of us, that the whole world was going to turn upside down, right? And then they, like so many of us, were, were going to have to learn how to do church virtually. But as Pastor G would tell you, the lessons that were learned during that process. And I'm so encouraged by seeing these beautiful faces of the folks in the gay church. We give the Lord a hand praise for the gay church. So, hallelujah. And for the, the number of folks in Victory Station that are here and those that are watching, we've got folks in Oklahoma and some of our membership are traveling and others sent me a text message and said, Pastor, we're on the golf course, but we're watching you. Right? <laughs> so we're all over the place. But I want to thank God for this man and woman of God who just sought the Lord and decided and, and gave of themselves to come be here with us. So would you stand as we receive the man of God, hallelujah, Pastor Gerald Jones, in the name of Jesus. Give the Lord a hand praise as he comes. Come on, everybody. Bless God. Listen, what's up, Kim? <laughs> Listen, I am at home, and I'm going to be led by the Lord on today. I feel his presence. I'm going to abide by the etiquette of the house and make sure that I am not up here longer than the pastor would be. So I see it is 229, so I'm going to make sure I do as we should do it. But I want you, if you would, to look at all the empty chairs, not just the ones that are set out, but the ones that are on the rack back there. And I want you to point to those chairs. And tell them, welcome home. Welcome home. Come on, you're not emphatic enough. Welcome home. Welcome home. Amen. I'm saying that because I know what it's like to start a ministry and God tells you to go and he doesn't tell you what's gonna happen when you go. He just tells you to be obedient and go. And I know that sometimes it can be frustrating and agitating and sometimes you feel like, did we do the right thing? Did we make the right decision? But he didn't call you for the people. He called you for himself. And regardless, I learned early on, don't preach to the seats, preach to the atmosphere. Preach to the atmosphere. So I'm not one, you have, you don't have to make no excuse about where everybody is. Matter of fact, man of God, stop saying it. Don't say it. If they're not here, they're not here. God is going to send who he purposed to be here. It, it's, it's one thing to speak to a room full of people, but God tests us when the room is empty. If you can still preach the word as if it's full, that shows where your heart is. So as the word says, don't turn to the right or to the left. Focus on what God has called you to. I'm not going to be long. I do have a word from the Lord. I'm going to go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, one verse. Normally, I would need a runway as well as a landing strip because I always want to give context. But today, we're just going to use a helipad. We're just going to take off from the scripture. 
and it's very familiar. The Apostle Paul says, when I was a child, All right. I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. Yes, I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Gonna take for a brief text. Hold that thought. Hold that thought. You may be seated. This text is one that is very unique, and I myself have read this text. If you could turn me down just a little bit, I know my voice is booming. This text, I've read it over and over and over again in my 25 years of preaching, ministering, and over my lifetime, I've heard this verse so many times. And I believe today that I'm going to share something that I have never heard. Someone may have spoken it, I'm not saying it's new, revelation but it's new to me. On Thursday night, about 11.15, the Lord uncovered this text for me in a way that I was so mesmerized that I have been dreaming about this text for the past few nights. I normally don't even practice preaching the text. But this text got so good to me that I had to go in my closet and preach it to myself. All right, sir. All right, sir. Says, when I was a child, yes. I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things it's not in this text what he says but it's how he says it and i want to say this i'm going to take this message back to the gate church because they have not heard it so this is fresh out the oven when you look at the text on its face it just simply talks about a man being childish or immature or a woman being immature, let's not just focus on the man. But it talks about growing up. But the Apostle Paul did something in this text that blew my mind. All right, sir. If you are note takers, you might want to highlight this. He says in here, when I was a child, I just have to keep saying it. I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child, but when I became a man, I put away childish things. What's childish? In here, he's telling us right up under our nose what's childish. And what's under our nose is if you will notice in your scripture, it is the order in which he places it. When I was a child, I spoke before I understood what I was speaking. And after I have understood it, I thought about it without thinking of the repercussions of what I said first. He said, when I was a child, I spoke without thinking. I spoke without understanding what I was saying. He said, but when I became a man, Put away childish things. What childish things? Reverse the order. Yeah. It's childish when a man speaks before he understands the implication of what he's saying. It's childish when a man thinks last before he says what he says. He's showing us that it's childish to not put it in order. As a man thinketh in his heart, yes, sir. so is he. Right here in the scripture, the apostle Paul 
It's saying you should be thinking first as a man. Long and hard. Then understand what you're thinking. Weigh what you're about to say. If it should be said. Because the weight of it, you can't change it. Once it's gone, it's a wound that won't heal without the miracle of God. It's not like I could cut myself and over time it will heal. But my words, as James says, it's like a small rudder. It is not tameable. It says it will set ablaze everything in its path. But the apostle says, the childish thing is the way you approach what you are going to say. My nephew, Jay, who to me is the spinning image of his father, who has a disposition at the age of 20 of calm, cool, and collected. But when Jay was three years old, Jay was temperamental, wanted his own way. As a child, it represents childlike behavior but it ain't childish Jay at three did something I thought was so amazing now that it's on this side my lovely wife who is here before my wife had dinner work wearing braces to correct the line in her face. I was cool with it. Like you're beautiful now. But Jay at three years old <laughs> decided he was going to draw a picture of his TT. It's childlike. He draws the picture of his TT's face as he sees it in his own mind. And before she had braces, it is what little Jay focused on was my wife's gap between her teeth. And Jay being as forward as he is, drew this picture with pencil and spaced all of her teeth apart took it to her and said, this is TT. And started laughing. My wife, after seeing it, started laughing hilariously. Showed it to me and I fell out laughing. And Jay, in his childlike state, did not intend to hurt or offend or wound her but to simply say it as a child, what's on his heart. My wife would later on go get her teeth fixed. Braces. She has a pretty mouth. Pretty face. She's always been beautiful to me. But what Jay did as a child was child-like. If did the same thing that Jay did as an adult without thinking first and having an understanding of what I'm about to say and then speaking it the damage would be irreparable imagine if a grown man at my age drew her teeth with her gaps and then gave it to her and said, this is what you look like. That would be considered childish. 
And it is important for all of us to understand that God wants the child life from you, not the childish. Goodness, I gain a whole lot from this text because as I understand that even as a grown man, there are certain things about me that I still love that are childlike, but not childish. I still love Captain Crunch. I still love Frosted Flakes, Fruit Loops. I still love all of those cereals. I still like to watch cartoons. Oh no, I, I find peace in cartoons. The 70s and 60s cartoon job. It's childlike to be able to just sit and color in the coloring book. That's childlike. But it becomes childish when I start to respond and react out of my own emotion and not weigh the consequences of my words and do as I feel, not what God instructs. A lot of us are running around wounded as adults, and a lot of us are causing wounds as adults, and it is childish. The scripture says, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, will by no means, says no matter what you do, you will not enter it. He says you got to be like a child, but not childish. You know why do I say this? I'm about to close. Holding that thought, the Apostle Paul was saying as a child, a child doesn't have to think before they speak because the place that it comes from is a place of innocence but when adult speak without thinking and understanding what they say they don't know the implications behind what they have said let me close with this because I'm going to put a magnifying glass on me some years ago as an aspiring musician I had lofty dreams of traveling the world and touring and newly married to my wife now of 34 years. To me, there was nothing more important than the music. And I had the unmitigated gall as my wife would want to be priority in my life to tell her you ain't priority. The music is priority. And I could see the hurt in her eyes when I told her that what was more important to me was the music and touring and all that it encompassed. She was shouting. It wasn't until years later that almost at the brink of our marriage that the Lord showed me, where's your music now? Your music can't help your marriage. Touring ain't going to help your marriage. No matter how nice you play, it's not going to help. What you need is to be whole and made one. I've recognized that without Sabrina, I wouldn't even be standing right here at Victory Station. I'm not touring. I'm not playing. I'm not making it a priority. However, I think about everything that I did to her and how God, she, her heart, she might still think of some things that I've done, and some things I've said, but I wanna say, I thank God that he caused me to put away childish things. Yeah. Yeah. I'ma say this. I'm going in my seat. If you're here, whether you're on the line, 
you, your husband, your mother, your father, your sister, your brother, your aunt, your uncle. If something has been said to you, and no matter how much they say they're sorry, it won't change it. The problem no longer lies with them. Yes, sir. It now lies with you. Yeah. Forgiveness is not feeling. You ain't gonna feel forgiveness. Yeah. You ain't gonna feel it. You're not. Forgiveness means to cut loose the debt that is owed. Right. That's to say you don't owe me nothing. You don't. There's nothing you owe me. No, you don't owe me anything. No matter how you feel, you owe me nothing. Doesn't mean you're going to think about it. Not going to think about it. But it means that I cut the debt free. So why is that? So I can be free. So I can be free. I'm say be free. And now it's the litmus test. Always think then understand. Then speak. Yeah. Yeah. The Apostle Paul is saying, the way he's talking here, he said, this is the wrong way to do it. Be childlike, not childish. God bless you. Give the Lord a hand of praise for his word. Hallelujah. I love Pastor Gerald. I love his ministry. I love how he takes. I always tell my team at work, we have to take calculus and make calculus addition and subtraction. Right? He takes something very complicated and he simplifies it. And it's a gift. It's a gift, brother. It's a gift. I would tell you because that scripture is very... That scripture of Matthew is very, um, very sensitive. And, and I, I so appreciate because one of the things I confessed to Pastor G when my wife was throwing me a 50th birthday party that I went to our pastor here and I shared with him privately. I believe in doing things in order. You don't do things out of order and expect God to bless chaos. Right? But when the Lord had called us, I went to my pastor here and I shared with him, uh, because we had only been here three years. I said, pastor, I said, I was a youth pastor. I was an associate pastor. I was a, I helped launch three churches and God has called us to do this work. And I'm insecure about it. I, I tell Pastor G, I know all of the things, the reasons why I shouldn't do it, right? All the things that are disqualifying. And I think it also, um, to the Robertsons, I don't think I told you guys this, but what happened was when I went to this man of God, he told me I was too old to start a church. And <laughs> you laugh at Brother Kirby, but it's true. He told me I was too old, Brother Bubba, to start a church. And as Pastor G was just preaching, God spoke a word in my spirit. And then someone spoke a word that was negative. It was almost like a toxin that they poured in my my iced tea. He told me I was too old. And then I started to step back into my closet. I'm like, well, apparently God didn't consult you when he called me. He didn't ask your permission for me to do this. But as Pastor G was just saying, sometimes folks drop seeds of poison in you. And Lord, help us to not be childish but be childlike. And I love the word of the Lord. Uh, I just, I appreciate this man of God. He is such an anointed, and this anointed woman of God, she is just so powerful, anointed. Lady Sabrina, will you stand up? Can we just see you? Just, just give the Lord a hand, praise. Hallelujah. This man of God, we love him dearly. Um, listen, you may be here. I, we were out canvassing the neighborhood in Irving and Plano yesterday at the Juneteenth celebrations, but and we were passing out flyers and 
one mother came up to us and grabbed me and my wife and said, listen, our daughter doesn't go to church. And can you come and talk to her? And, and, and I, I, I share this because the situation is for a man and woman of God to say in 2019, we feel the, the call of the Lord to start a ministry. So I heard someone say that all of the good pastors are now passing away. They made a comment that, um, you know, what's going to happen when Bishop Jakes uh, retires? Dr. Charles Stanley just went to heaven. There are a number of men and women of God that are going on to their heavenly reward. And the thing that, and the, when Pastor G and I talked, and the situation is, is that God is raising up a remnant of people that are bold enough and courageous enough to say, listen, I'm going to do the will of God. I don't care how you talk about me, why, how unqualified I am. I'm going to do the will of God. And then what happened is I told my, I told my wife, I said, God, I have been dealing, I have been, actually it wasn't God. I was dealing with my own insecurities about this and Pastor G, you hit the nail on the head. And then all of a sudden the Lord started sending people saying, Pastor, that word was straight from the Lord for me. And people, and Brother Kirby has sent me messages it's like, Pastor, and other people have just sent. And then this beautiful woman yesterday said to us, can you come and talk to our daughter? She hasn't been to church. She doesn't have a church. And that's when it hit me, Pastor G, reminded me that Jesus said the fields are ripe for harvest. But pray to the Lord that he would send laborers to collect, gather the harvest. And so for those of you that are here, just like that precious mother, you may be here and you may have already accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior and as your Lord. But there may be some watching either in the audience, physical audience of those that are watching around the nation. And like I said, we know you're watching because you call us, you tell us, you text us, you, you DM us, you send all of these instant messages and let us know. And we found out that another cousin of ours, Brother Michael, we're praying for you in the name of Jesus. His his cancer just had, had returned. And let me tell you something. I believe in the power of the Holy Ghost. I believe in the power of prayer. I believe in the power of the word of the Lord. And the, and the, and the Bible says that the Lord sent his word and healed them. Because there was power and there was authority in the name of Jesus. And the word that came out of his mouth. And so you may be here. You may have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and the pardon of your sins. Or you may have an ailment in your body. Or you may, as Pastor G just ministered you may be recovering from someone's poisonous words that they dropped in your spirit but either way we're going to plead the blood of jesus and i'm going to give you a chance to come and make jesus the lord of your life and we're just going to pray if you just by obedience we just bow your heads and just pray with us father in the name of jesus lord we thank you for your word we thank you for your servant oh god pastor jones oh god we thank you for him we thank you for the word that came through his lips, O oh God, from his lips to our heart and ears, O oh God. We thank you for it. You told us in the, in the gospel of Matthew, O oh God, to become as little children, O oh God, so that we can see your kingdom, that we can enter your kingdom, O oh God. And Lord, we ask you to, Lord, bless those that are hearing this word, O oh God, let it be as, O oh God, good seed on good soil, O oh Lord. Bless the congregation of the Gate Church of North Dallas, O oh God, Bless them and multiply them in Jesus' name. Send souls to their campus, oh God, there in, in Plano, oh God, and give them blessings that they won't even have room to receive, Lord. And Lord, if there is someone watching this service, even either in this room or around the nation, oh God, and they have not accepted you as Jesus, as the Lord of their life, oh God, I'm going to ask you all to pray this prayer with me. Father, Lord Jesus, I thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. Lord, I believe that you are the son of God who came to this earth. You hung on the cross, you bled and you died. But Lord, you also rose again on the third day. And Lord, I accept you into my life and I make you my savior and my Lord. And Lord, I will follow you and I will walk under your grace 
all the days of my life. And if you pray that prayer, we believe you spoke, as Paul said in Romans 10 and 9, 10 and 9 that if thou wilt believe in thy heart, your heart, and confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, that, and that God has raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. And if you made that faith-filled pledge today, we want you to send a message to us via our, our chat stream. Send a message to us in our box, and, we, and we'll respond to you in Jesus' name. Would you give the Lord a hand praise for those that made that decision? Hallelujah. We're so glad, I'm glad when they said unto me, Sister KT, I don't want to put you on the spot. You know how I am by asking folks to sing spontaneously, but while we got, you know, it ain't even three o'clock. Can I just, can I pull you? Can I pull you? You know what, child? Come on up here. I, I want to hear you sing. I love, I love it. I love this anointed woman of God. And however the Lord used you, Brother Kirby, just help us out. We're going to have Lady. Lady KT sing for us, and then we're going to close out in prayer. Hallelujah. Good afternoon. I tell you, I tell you, I tell you, it's so good to hear Pastor Gerald today. <laughs> My heart is full. It's not three o'clock, so you got to wait. <laughs> Give me a minute. But in my time this morning, I have my worship time. I was just crying out, God, I need you. And I guess he knew I was going to have to say it. I need the earth. Praise God for the old hymns, though. I, I don't know if y'all know them. I praise God for those old hymns. I got to stop because I'll, I'll, I'll go there, Sister KT, and I don't, I don't want to do that. 
But anyway, but if you don't have a church home, thank you so much for being obedient. Hallelujah. I received the worship. That worship was just, just in the spirit that has been in this room all day. If you don't have a church home, hallelujah, and you're looking to connect with a ministry, we would love to have you be a part of the uh, Victory Station ministry family. Again, for those of you physically here or those of you that are watching, we love you so much and we thank God for you. Let's stand. Let's get ready to go in Jesus' name. We're so grateful for all these beautiful faces and folks that are in the room. Hallelujah. Sweetheart, come with me, baby. Hallelujah. Just will you just lift your hands as we as we pray? Hallelujah. Father, thank you for this day, oh God. We thank you for the word. Thank you for Pastor G. Thank you for Lady Sabrina, oh God. Thank you for the obedience of, of, of Sister KT, oh God. And, and Lord, we need you, Lord, we need you. Every hour, Lord, we need you. Oh God, we need you, Lord. And we, we thank you because you said that you inhabit. Oh, God, you hang out in the praises of your people, Lord. And, Lord, we want you and we need you, oh, God, to go with us from this place. But, Lord, never take your Holy Spirit and your presence from us, Lord. Oh, God, cover everyone in this, in this room under the sound of my voice and those that are watching from all over the nation. Cover us in the name of Jesus. We plead the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. Bless Pastor Gerald, oh God. Bless his beautiful congregation of saints that are here, Lord. And bless those that made the decision to give their hearts to you. We thank you for them. We count it done. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 amen.